Hey, Shay, thanks for joining us today. As we're getting started, give us a little background on yourself. Okay, uh, there's a lot of background since I've been around for more than a couple of years now. Uh, but uh, essentially, I've uh, sort of, uh, you know, I don't think anybody plans to be a salesperson, right? It's kind of rare, right? It's not a career that you dream of as a kid. <laughs> uh, but uh, somehow, you know, I found myself uh, having to earn a buck and uh, sort of uh, rolled into tech sales around 98. So I've been around there. Actually, my my first project, my first sales were into the Y2K scare. If, uh, as old folks still remember, where all the computers were supposed to die off on the, uh, you know, on the last day of uh, 1999, well, the move to five digits. Somehow that didn't happen, but we made a nice buck. And uh, I've been in, in tech sales ever since. Uh, some larger enterprises like Oracle, but mostly probably in the last, 10 years or so, mostly in startups. So this is sort of my, I would say, passion. Keeps me young, keeps me on my toes, so to speak. And uh, I've been helping and working with smaller startups, early stages, little later stages. Uh, startups uh, mostly doing enterprise sales. That's sort of uh, where I come from. And how did you get good at it? <laughs> Prior and error. Uh, I'd say I, I started looking at it as a profession that requires some attention, probably rather late, right? So it was uh, much of a battle, yeah, and so on. But sort of, I think necessity sort of, you know, pushes you around, right? When you need to do something and this is your livelihood and this is sort of your survival, you sort of take out stuff in yourself that you didn't know existed. Uh, so that's sort of when, but in recent years, I would say in the last 10 years, said I did spin and stuff, you know, when we, I was younger, so all the classic old stuff. Uh, and then almost in every place I worked at, there was some kind, you know, of sales training. This is some, most management like to do it, you know, once a year or something to, to be sure that uh, they haven't missed that. Uh, but I think I got more, I would say, professional at it uh, since LinkedIn sort of came into picture and started following some of the stuff. And I saw this actually stuff that you can learn from and, and actually, you know, get you get you thinking and sort of put all that random experiences into a more sort of structured maybe knowledge. And I think that really helped. And, and I think in the last three roles I had, I, I really was able to benefit from, from thinking, not only from, you know, running around like, ah, but actually doing some thinking and structuring stuff in an effective way and understanding, you know, uh, strengths and weaknesses, stuff like that. Well, that's what I've noticed about <clears throat> great salespeople is that they've gotten away from the just grind. Of course, you have to work hard. You got to show up. You got to do the job and, and started looking at it more than just platitudes. You know, two years, one. Oh, God, I, if I hear that again, I'll, I'll puke. And they start looking at it as like it is a profession, like doctors and lawyers call it a practice. It's, it's, it's a combination between art and craft, right? Uh, very much. It's human, so you'll never be, you, you know, surprises. And that's part of, the, the I think, what's, what's great about it. You're not, that the tension and the fact that you're dealing with human doesn't let you be blasé and sort of, yeah, sure. Because success is never guaranteed. Every quarter is a new quarter. Every, you know, you close your biggest sales ever. Yeah, it's done. You get, a, you know, you get a bonus. Next day comes along. There are new targets ahead. You can sort of rest on your laurels. There's no no real way to do that. So that keeps you alert. And you got to get good at it because you got to be consistent, right? I mean, so you scored once. Maybe the guy liked you. I don't know. Maybe whatever circumstances, right? People, I would say about, you know, I, I, I'm not a statistician, but more than 60%, in my opinion, of the salespeople that make, you know, make quota, is because of where they are, right? They got the right alignment of job and quota. So the orders pretty much come in, right? You're in an enterprise sales, you've got, you know, Apple and I don't know, as your accounts and they are incumbent customers. So you you just walk between the offices and make sure that they don't forget to uh, to pay for their licenses, right? So that that's a major part. But having to start again and again and building the sales motion and understanding the unique, uh, you know, the unique value and how do you go about it and uh, what are the problems you're solving? So that, that I think that was my biggest sort of insight is understanding that this is about solving problems and helping customers. 
and not pushing stuff over. And it started with empathy. So you've got to be able to do that, right? You've got to be able to feel. Yeah, so I think that, uh, <laughs> I, I think one of your uh, videos, you talk about Sandler, right? And you give them quite a uh, washing down. Uh, Me? I think Sandler or Challenger. What's uh, not the, the Challenger approach, Probably right? There's, Challenger, a, there's a book. Yeah. yeah, Challenger. I think you did a video on that, right? If I'm not <laughs> mistaken. Uh, it, it's like a permit to be, to be obnoxious. Um, a sort of uh, approach there. And, and then you realize that th this empathy is about understanding the customer and understanding is understanding why are they doing stuff? Why would they be doing stuff? And when you get start thinking about that, it's not, okay, you want to sell them more, but why would they buy more? Why would they do this? Why would they do that? And when you go start going down that route, I think you, you, know, you either get better or <laughs> you, know, you, well, get, uh, you get out of the game. Because you need that empathy to understand why they would buy. They're not going to yeah. buy for your reasons and other people's reasons. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and, and empathy is a sort of combination, right? You need to be able to listen. So everybody talks about, you know, 60% talking, 40%, all those numbers. But if you, if you do it statistically, you won't get anywhere. You gotta that, do that, it that's not the way to do it, right? Uh, yeah, you've got to do it. And you've got to be interested. I think, you know, everybody gets tired. Everybody is not, you know, doesn't perform at 110% 24-7. But if you're not interested in, in the person uh, on the other side of the of the Zoom today, right? Nobody meets face-to-face -face anymore. Uh, you're not interested in them as a person, as a company, as, as, as something. That, that will come through. If you're going through a list of questions, ah, so what are you doing about that? What's your biggest challenge? Uh, Nobody wants to talk to you, but if you're interested, what, what's what's you know, what's our favorite subject? Us, right? So everybody would want to speak about themselves, what they're doing, and it becomes conversation. And I would say, more than eighty percent of the time, it's genuinely interesting. At least for me, maybe I'm an idiot. I don't know, uh, but it is genuinely interesting. You know, people are interesting. They do stuff. They they try out stuff. And if you're interested in them, you know, and and. <clears throat> then they sort of see that, I guess, and they, they see someone who's not only about, you know, doing a dog and pony show and stuff, something down the road or whatever, uh, but you also get to learn a lot, right? From what they say, from what they don't say, from the way they say stuff, uh, and so on. And then when you become more proficient, you hear about, like, even in the stuff that they don't say, decision, uh, you know, uh, political capital, if they have or they don't have political capital, the person you're talking to is a decision maker or not. Do they understand, uh, you know, how to get, let's say they love it, but do they know how to sell it internally? Do they know? So you, you start listening for that stuff as well, and then you really become, you know, a lot better at what you do, and you're able to sort of, you know, get get some deals done. Well, what this is about. That's it. And today, you know, people are given a script a list of yeah. accounts, pitch, 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 pitch. And you're trying to find interest, not create it. You got to create it. No, yeah, you got to, especially again, in, in my specific line where we're doing, you know, startups. So a startup by definition is something that wasn't there before, right? Uh, listen, the competition and not everyone that says they're disrupting the market are really disrupting, right? It's a slogan that every everybody uses but by the finisher you're trying to tell customers listen we we've we've realized something you may have not realized yet this is what you're coming with but to make that something that they feel you gotta look for for the signs what are the signs that they have that so some of them you will do in research uh, before but most of it you will find if they'd be interested enough you know to have a conversation with you this is your time to get that uh, up and, and to get them interested and to talk about that uh, that stuff. And again, if you go into a conversation, you hear a lot more than they intend to say when people, you know, talk naturally, they don't, uh, you know, maybe think about each and every word they say. So you get you can hear a lot about the background of stuff and what's been going on and how the company's, uh, you know, moving around. I had a meeting with our CEO probably, I don't know, a month and a half ago, six weeks. And that, uh, we went in and they had, you know, the director there and this and that. And the, the architect was very much in our favor. And and we, we you know, we got 
quite far in the conversation and we got out the city and said, hey, you know what, this is going to be real hard. It's a, I said, listen, this organization is chaotic. There's chaos, the offices, the way we got in, just with the receptionist and, and where we sat and, you know, moving. But it felt, I, I listen, something is, is not, it's a successful organization. They traded in, you know, over a billion, but the, the, their processes are chaotic, and and since then we weren't even even to start. We're still between legal and compliance, and the NDA is is uh, between fe, fe, fo, fell between the chairs. Nobody knows where it is, just because of that. And this is something that you learn to be very alert for uh, when you're doing that. It's not only coming in blah, 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 saying your stuff and listening to a few questionnaires. It's about getting that whole. You're selling to people and you're selling to an organization, right? You're selling to something which is, uh, this is why it becomes more of a profession because you're not just convincing a single person. There are multiple decision makers and, you know, there are people who can stop it and people who can help you. And it doesn't, and if I would be selling watches, I don't know, at, 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 uh, that would be a different skill. But to sell on an enterprise level, you need to also figure out the organization and that it, that requires, I think, nobody's born with that. This is a, a skill that you need to train to. Right. It, it's judgment. You're, you're judging yeah. how, what's the likelihood that this company is going to buy. Yeah. Exactly. Not, not that they're interested, not that they need it, not that they can afford it. Will they do it within yeah. our lifetime? Are they, are they, yeah, are they the kind of organization that will buy it? Are they in that position? Are they, yeah. And mm -hmm, exactly, what blinds our judgment? It's this overconfidence, or the, or yeah. this not focusing. Yeah, because we have the best product, and we, if you come in with your, you know, we have. They're talking to us. They gotta want to buy. Yeah, <laughs> are they crazy? You know, I've yeah, had it does happen. Say, why would they meet yeah. with us if they didn't want to buy? They just want to <laughs> learn. They're bored. Who knows why they're meeting yeah, with you? Yeah, you got something interested. Yeah, that somebody nagged them enough, you know, in a in a thousand email cadence. At some point, they said, "Okay, you know what? <laughs> it would be easier to just <laughs> easier go to the, take meeting, the then, meeting than put up then, then, then keep uh, keep pushing back on it, right? Maybe that's their sort of. Uh, uh, but any, you know, these these are the meetings uh, you have, and it's actually right now where uh, where I'm at at Rookout. We are actually. That that thing of the interest, I think it's not only a question of, of sales profession. I think this is sort of where the world is also shifting to. So the charismatic hustler, I think, is becoming less and less relevant. So, you know, Wolf of Wall Street kind of guy that can swing everybody. And it may work, uh, you know, in a single meeting, let's say, you know, the, the guy's a wizard, so he can charm people off their feet. In a but it doesn't end there. It doesn't end. There are multiple interactions and multiple, uh, you know, processes and interactions you need to keep up with in order to, to succeed in sense So that hustler type can be, you know, people, you know, listen, there are, you know, we work just went public for 9 billion, right? And that entire company is built on an ego of a single person, right? Like the, the, that, and it's a $9 billion ego. That's not a, uh, that's a massive ego at well, the end, but that, that's a very rare, uh, right, situation well, that, that there's difference between, you know, because he is not selling, he's marketing. He's not selling to a customer. He sold to an yeah. investor. Invest. Correct. Correct. And but an investor a in a car ride who has more money than he knows what to do with. <laughs> the circumstances where, where your customer is, that the investor is part of your sales art, right? The, their circumstances, yeah. what they, where they are. It's part of your, and I think, obviously, someone with that is, is you know, that, that's a skill, right? Or that's a, a, a yeah, you know. Of course a, it is. But it's different it's than what power. we do. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't right? think. Because it, it, you're incredibly charming and handsome. And I'm sure that's worked against you. But. <laughs> yeah. I've had issues. Yeah. Well, I mean, you've been selling 20 years plus. Have you ever seen the best rep at your company be that prototypal, prototypical salesperson? I, I I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't. I'm trying to sort of think back about you know and people that I looked up to and some it, of them are even I, I even I even not as handsome as me. Well, uh, I'm usually the, the one at the ones, awards you know. banquet going, "How the hell did that person sell anything?" But. <laughs> But no, but they had a particular skill in a market 
and they figured it out. Yeah. It, it was yeah, never well, the Wolf of Wall Street, chest exactly. pounding, testosterone. Uh, I, I remember the, he, there was a, like a, a um, he, he gives talks, right? And there were sure. publications before he, before he came. And I, I still remember that slogan. And to everybody, probably over the 10 years then I saw that. We are going to give you such powers that you need to uh, exercise them caution because you can influence people to a degree that is unbelievable. Something like that, like you can charm women off their feet. So, and that sort of magical, you know, will, will teach you tricks and that will magically sweep you. Listen, I guess if you're young, that's sort of, you know, uh, well, it, it makes it, you, it is, it, it, there is an attraction to it. Of course. You quickly realize there's nothing. That's not how it works. No. One of the most brilliant salespeople I I, I had the, the uh, good uh, luck to work with was back in Oracle. The guy was a bank, deputy bank manager. That was his role before he transitioned into sales. And, and they were smart enough to let him uh, do finance. And he was able in the first year to get, you know, deals with all the banks that were closed. And not, it's not, it wasn't like personal connection. The one was a vice, you know, vice manager of a, of a branch. He wasn't like, you know, top manager or whatever. But his understanding of the industry, all, that sort of started clicking bells. Like, and he was, and he is, as I said, he has the same sort of handsome advantages uh, in some ways. But he was like, wow. I mean, people were saying, you know, Oracle can't sell to finance. We are blocked there. The competition is incumbent. We'll never get there. The guy comes in, no show. He's a, you know, very sort of mundane looking uh, guy. Amazing stuff. And sort of, the, I, do, I don't think I knew at the time that I was learning from it, but, you know, these things kind of uh, trickle in and, and you learn from it and you understand how to, how to be a little bit better every time. Yeah. And, how do you treat it like a profession? How do you put together your process? How'd you learn that? Is it written? So th there's a problem with me personally that I have ADHD. I discovered it when my daughter actually was diagnosed and I sort of filled in the same questionnaire and I said, wow, okay, 18 out of 18. That's, that's <laughs> high. Like you have, if you get nine out of 18, you have ADHD. I got like 16 or 17 positive answers on that particular questionnaire. And I realized sort of when I had that, I sort of thought back about stuff that I have that happened to me. Uh, so I don't have a university degree because of that. I've been, you know, one semester, like everything exploded, couldn't get it. So I'm not very good at, you know, uh, written down processes that everything is well articulated and stuff like that. But every time there's a decision to be made, it it's very clear to me what's what's the right next step uh, to do after I understand where I am, right? I, I don't come in to a new organization. So this particular organization, I've been there about a year and a half now. You know, I came with, with uh, my experience, but I didn't say, listen, I know everything. You've got to do this, 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 and this. But after sort of, you know, a few months in, I said, listen, this is what we're not doing right, good enough. This is what we should change, doing this do that and then that sort of becomes a process so uh, you you correct each step you correct each, each interaction you tweak it and all of a sudden you look back and you have a process in place that you can sort of repeat and you can train other people to and you can uh you know you you, uh, you can benefit from I mean, but it's always it's never a static thing so one one thing i learned is that you always learn and there isn't a a single trick that wins all the, you know, all the deals and all the situations. Sometimes you've got to move faster. Sometimes you go with a smaller one. Sometimes you've got to be a bit more aggressive. Sometimes you've got to be completely, you know, accommodating. But, but how do you either visualize it? Do you write it down? You whiteboard it? Do you just sit so, uh, in a dark uh, room starts, and think, think about you know, it? We, yeah, it starts with Salesforce, right? And then you, you go and, and you look at the names, right? It starts with looking at the names of the different steps right and the percentage right so in your crm you have the sales right the five six seven whatever and there's a right a percentage that calculates the uh right that's sort of a given right i, I have never been in you know, when we when you didn't have that and then you start thinking about it is that what is our first step? do we have discovery do we start with poc do people first sign up and then we call them do we start with you know free users and then we there are many models there and you need to understand where you are. And many times 
when you step in, especially to a, a startup where sales is not, uh, when you replace another sales person, so replace, you may help improving it. But when you when you go into something which is more heroic and 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 it's the entrepreneurs that sort of put things into place, so there are ones, but it's more it's about the product. No, you gotta see this first. These this is the feature set and and so on. And then you start looking at it from from the customer. What is the process that the customer is going through when they're buying? What are the 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 you know mental I would say even processes that they go through interest and uh, you know getting assured and getting budget and, and then you have of course the administrative stuff like, like you can kind of, legal stuff like that that's that's always you know part of uh, that but when you realize that when you understand what they need to go through medicine then you can construct your uh, your process and I think the main thing about building a when to act and what is your sort of call to? How do you know, you know, what, what to expect next? And many times the customer would ask you that, right? If you have that figured out, the customer said, well, how does it normally look, right? They would many times, and this is something that I also remember from your videos, they don't know how to buy. Oh. <laughs> Sorry for, for, for listening in. But it is something. What's that, your buying uh, process? <laughs> exactly. What, what's your buying process? No, no. What's your buying process? No. What's yours? What's yours? Right. Um, so I, I wouldn't, you know, tell them what's their buying process, but I will tell them what is the process of establishing the value, right? What is the process that other customers go through in order to ascertain for themselves that they're making the right decision and they're attributing the right value and understanding, you know, the timeline in which. You'll, and that and that sort of makes sense, but you basically because you're not you try not to invent it up and create something that's completely bogus. It, it should be based on experience and stuff like that. Go ahead. And what do you think you do better than most salespeople? No, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. I'm I'm the one. Both. No, um, I, I think it's it's. Uh, the one thing that I sort of, you know, when, when we discuss sales, and I, I talk to my my peers at the company, right, the CEO, the CEO, the other the, the VP, uh, you know, the sales engineers, it's about listening listening into the stuff that's not being said. It's it's and hearing those sounds which are in the background, how people are talking, not only what they're saying, but how they're saying it, how it's tone of voice, and uh, but it's many many times I think what is not being said. That, that sort of gives you so much information about what kind of organization, what kind of urgency, what kind of... Uh, so you see, you would see, you know, a, a interaction between manager and, uh, you know, and reportees. So one of the things that's very common here on our side of the ocean is that because of the lack of, uh, uh, of good developers, the, the say of the you know, the developer, just a, you know, run of the mill is becoming much stronger than the leader. The leader, VP of engineering, right? 50 people, I would say. That's not, you know, they probably raised, I don't know, $300 million in, in capital and they're probably unicorn, right? But when they present a solution to their team, they're asking for their opinion. They're asking for acceptance. And, and, you know, if, if you weren't sort of alert, you would come in, yeah, I came in, the VP told me I should uh, sell you. So, <laughs> you know, by the way, it's already done. But he's actually waiting for their approval. And he would never, he or she, right, they would never uh, push something uh, down their throat or try to push something on them because their satisfaction and their ability to function is much more important than your product or your presumed value. And this is something you've got to be, I, I actually had a, a meeting the other day when I almost, like I was that close to missing that. And I I sort of, uh, hey, this is, you, you got to understand where you are. I, I sort of backtracked and start talking to all the developers, gave them, you know, opportunities to talk and so on. And, and we sort of corrected that misalignment in the beginning. So I think maybe that is something that I am a little bit better off. Because that's reading a situation. That's evaluating an opportunity by what's not being said, the interaction of people. Yeah. 
and what they're avoiding and what subjects they're happy to talk about and what they're a little less happy to talk about. There's always these, uh, these nuances which give you the understanding of what kind of an organization uh, you're talking to. And you make mistakes, right? You, you, you make a judgment and, you know, the, the idea is to be right more, right in poker, right? It's to be right more than, you, you can't do be 100% correct all the time, ever, never, because again, it's humans and I'm human and the other side is human. And you got to learn. You got to say, okay, what did I miss there? What, what, what was it like I didn't get? You know, you go out of a meeting, everything sounds perfect. You say, yeah, the guy's going to call me tomorrow. We're going to set the POC. This is a deal for four weeks. And the guy is ghosting you, move to a different country, plastic surgery to change their face. Never hear from them again, right? Okay, what did I miss? I mean, am I, <laughs> what's wrong? Uh, that happens less and less. I say, I would say, Probably, maybe this kind of miss, right? When I when there's a misalignment between how I judge a uh, an opportunity or a situation, when what, what actually happens, I would say that happens. A problem I miss maybe one in ten. Like I get it completely uh, uh, misaligned, but it's still <laughs> it's not perfect. <laughs> well, it, it's a very valuable skill because that's really what we're doing. Otherwise, people have 50 opportunities. They consider them all equal, and they work on them randomly. Yeah, and it's about the pushing. They, they, they think that it's, it's the push and not the pull. It's the, and, and if you don't create a rapport, I mean, people talk about it. So I remember a meeting when I, I was uh, being interviewed. And they asked me to, rep- to prepare a pitch, and I started, you know, with some discovery, and I like five min- minutes into it, the, the interviewer says, but what about building rapport? Said, I'm not sure. I, I told the, 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 that sort of took me by surprise. I think in, in a situation like that, we're talking about, you know, discovery and how do you build that? That sort of, no, but we start talking to them about this, about that. And if they don't love the product, they will never buy it. Okay. I think there's a bit of a misalignment there. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so building rapport as a, as a task on your agenda, that comes up like completely artificial, like weather talking, right? In, in uh, Yeah, it's been raining, it's been raining. <laughs> it's, it's, it's worse than not doing anything, right? Because it's so artificial. I think it, it, it puts people off, right? It doesn't build that. Uh, but when you, you know, second, third meeting in, you, you, you start sort of having, I use humor a lot. So I would, I, I try to, you know, uh, uh, throw in a cynic remark here and there. And I've been hit, I've been burnt, right? I've been seeing people looking at me like, oh. Uh, so I, I'm not 100%, uh, you know, on it. I would say, again, 80% probably, I'm, uh, I, I wouldn't say I'm funny, but at least I'm not, I'm not uh, hurting people. And so, be, you know, do a little breaking of the ice. See if the, the team we're working with are talking to us. Are they sort of, you know, aligning with us? Are they letting us in into their, you know, concerns and processes. Is that process happening? And then you can judge, you know, um, where you are. Is that the process that's uh, that's happening? And then w- when you become a leader, you also need to understand not only to get your, you know, your people to do that, but also to ask the questions are on the processes you're not running yourself, right? Because you, you don't do everything. Uh, unfortunately, you can't do everything. You need to have other people do stuff as well. How to ask those questions that will expose where things really are, uh, you know, in, in any given uh, scenario. Cool. Hey, Shay, really appreciate your time today. Where can people go to connect and follow you? Uh, LinkedIn, uh, my, uh, my profile. That's it. We're done. Wow, amazing. That was fast. I talked a lot. <laughs>